Well, that certainly wasn't fun. It wasn't fun at all. What should have been a real measuring stick game to see where this young Miami Dolphins team is immediately turned into a holy schnickies our quarterback who we have questions about is hurt meaning we still don't know if he's the guy or not and also our offensive line is abysmal. The game was, essentially, over within nine minutes and the Bills did exactly what many of us, in the darkest parts of our cynical minds, thought they were going to do and that was curb stomp the Dolphins to the Earth's core. The Buffalo Bills, who had quite the presence in the building based on what I saw, laid the smackdown and they didn't even play that well. Part of that was because the Dolphins' defense had some pride in trying to not get steamrolled and part of it I think was because the Bills made sure they got out of there with no major injuries of their own. It certainly felt that the Bills were coasting a bit there even though the final score was 35-0. We learned a little bit more about a few things. But sadly I think we all realize we have some lingering important questions still hanging out there that will not be truly answered anytime soon. Noah Igbenogany is just about finished. I think that's a wrap on Noah Igbegane. I could be wrong and he may surprise me later in the year but when you're a first round pick only a year ago and you're a healthy scratch two games in a row to open the season, I think the writing is on the wall. That writing says, Noah Igbenogany was a major swing and A is for this organization. We got all giddy in the offseason seeing Iggy working out with Xavier Howard and having the body of an Adonis and those cool shades he wears doesn't hurt him either. But none of that ever translated to him being a football player that can be on the field. Whatever you do, don't go back and look at the players the Dolphins could have drafted at the spot they took Iggy. Don't do that to yourself. You don't need to raise that blood pressure up more than it already is. As I said, I hope I'm wrong about Iggy's plight. I hope in a game or so he's out there filling in for someone else who wasn't a first rounder and is making plays. I don't think that will happen but it'd be a lot cooler if it did. Tua going down will sadly do nothing to stop the recirculation of Watson rumors. Six snaps. Six snaps are all Tua got before AJ Epinesa hit Tua into another dimension. We'll get to the folks responsible for this happening in the first place in a little bit. But sadly Tua going down and being diagnosed with bruised ribs making him day to day did nothing to put out the Deshaun Watson rumors. We know that nothing new will be coming out and that all the usual suspects and even some rodents underneath the rocks will recirculate old reports of how the Dolphins are still the front runners to acquire Watson. That's how this works. Mention Watson to Miami as your headline and get paid. Not tough to understand. Still, it sucks to hear. All the garbage from internet tough guys who long for when football players cut their fingers off to play football is out there and it stinks. I expected nothing less, hopefully. Tua can heal up quickly, perhaps miss next week's game against the Raiders, and comes back and show everyone what he can do so we can a real analysis if he's the guy or not. Either way, the Watson stuff isn't going away and what happened on Sunday only brought that back into focus, once again. The offensive line is beyond putrid. Right off the bat, Jesse Davis needs to be out of the starting lineup. I don't care if Bob Barker is brought in to play right tackle, anybody but Jesse Davis. He's simply not a starting offensive lineman. He's a swing lineman that can come in and start a few games. He's not a guy you want to put in there and roll with him for multiple seasons. He's not that guy, pal. In the play where Tua got bludgeoned, I'm not even sure Davis knew he was playing football. That's how he looked as Epinesa ran by him. I know some beat writer thinks Davis needs to be respected for being the alleged, best out of a subpar bunch of linemen, but that doesn't mean anything. Davis needs to be replaced. That doesn't mean that the rest of the offensive should be safe. Austin Jackson, another mid-first round pick a year ago, is very bad at his job right now. Like Davis, Jackson played as if he fell into a few patches of quicksand while Bill's defenders ran past him. We've tried convincing ourselves that Jackson will eventually get it because he is a first rounder meaning he has the talent in him right? Wrong. Very wrong. He doesn't have the talent. At best, he's just a guy. Hunt and Kindley are also trending towards being Jags, just a guy type player. They're simply not doing anything to make me think any different. It doesn't matter who the quarterback is. They're going to die back there because the Dolphins have somehow brought in player after player who simply isn't a starting caliber offensive lineman. Not fun to hear and even worse to say but it is reality. 
doesn't give me any hope that Liam Eichenberg will be any better because you have to think that Greer and the scouting department are looking for the same type of qualities in all their linemen. So why won't Eichenberg turn out any different? Brissett is fine but doesn't seem comfortable in this offense. Brissett had the impossible job of coming in for Tua behind an offensive line that wanted nothing to do with blocking people. He came in, got knocked around, and put together zero drives that got the Dolphins points. I don't even think it's his fault because this offense was built for Tua Tungavailoa. Tua has more running ability and is excellent at running an RPO style of offense. That's not at all what Brissett does. Brissett is a regular dropback passer that doesn't do much running. Even his first pass where he sidearmed a pass to Parker. It looked very awkward. To me, Brissett looks out of place and I don't know why he's the backup. Again, he's a good football player that has won games in this league. But why bring him in when you have an offense like Miami has created? It'd be like drafting Mac Jones to run the Lamar Jackson offense. Doesn't make sense but not making sense is the Dolphins' specialty.